Zone Sports Show, presented by R.C. Willie, your home, your way. Great to have you with us for another season of the Rep Zone as we talk everything UNLV football. Kevin Bollinger alongside UNLV head football coach Tony Sanchez, and nobody I know wants to get this season going more than you. Well, it's good to be back here in the studio. That means we're getting closer to kickoff, so it's exciting. It's been a good camp, and uh, we're excited to get going. We uh, have going to break down everything on both sides of the ball throughout the next half hour. We're going to get you ready for the season with a closer look at the Rebels. We begin with what to expect from the offense. When you think about the UNLV offense, one word comes to mind, weapons. Nine starters return on a unit that has big play potential at wide receiver, running back, and quarterback. Redshirt freshman Armani Rogers slides into the role of QB1, and he comes with a lot of accolades. The dual threat quarterback has talented receivers to throw to. Everyone is back healthy after they all went down with injuries last season. And those receivers pose serious matchup problems. Obviously, Devontae Boyd, one of the top receivers in college football, I would say. Um, they're going to obviously look for him, double cover him. Then now you have Kendall Keys on the other side. And then what? You're going to try and double cover him. Then you have uh, Darren Woods in the slot or me in the slot. Drew Tegman, the freshman, has come a long way. So, I mean, there's just so much talent in this receiving core that it's unlimited. The running backs also all return, led by Charles Williams and Lexington Thomas. It sets up for some balance on play calling that will keep defenses honest. Hopefully we'll be able to run the ball like we've done last year. We took a big step forward running the ball, and when you run the ball well, play action passes uh, should be there for us, and that's where the big plays are going to come from because on third down you want to convert, but on first and second down if we're running the ball well, hopefully we can get the ball downfield. We can have a touchdown any play anywhere, and you know anything can happen for us. And I feel like we can be very electric this year, and we can put up a lot of big plays and make a, a lot of noise in Mountain West. Then there's the offensive line, the Orcas, who only lost center Will Kreitler and remain a tight-knit and funny group. We lost our lead Orca. Some people say he was the big Orca, but I mean, if you look at me, like I think I'm like size-wise. The big orca. At 6'7, 290, Kyle Saxelid is big, but he stresses it's about all five linemen being in sync. We all already know how each other plays, you know. Uh, what a lot of people don't understand is an offensive line that's five different pieces that all have to move the same. The Rebels are shooting for an offensive play count in the high 70s to 80s and look to put up a lot of points, higher than their 31 points per game last season. Fans can expect a lot of fireworks every week. We're going to talk a little bit more about Armani Rogers later. We have a feature on him later in the show. But in terms of handing him the controls, how comfortable are you with giving it to this red shirt freshman? You know, we're comfortable with it. Um, you know, that's kind of what was the plan. You know, we, we felt like one day he'd be that guy, and that day came pretty soon. Um, but he's a freshman, so we know that we're going to have to help him maneuver through some of these things. You know, we, we don't expect it to be all roses, but got to help him through some of those tough times. And I'm sure they'll come in week one. There's going to be some crazy competitive situations that happen every week, and helping him manage through those uh, situations is really going to you know, dictate the kind of year we have. It's really the best case scenario for him, though, because he is surrounded by a lot of playmakers at wide receiver and running back. 
to take a little bit of the pressure off him and give him a lot of options. Well, and that was kind of the thought process last year when you did have the you know the multiple injuries that we had and you know quarterbacks were getting thin. Um, you know, we said, well, what kind of situation are we putting him into? And now those guys are back, they're healthy. Um, you know, we've got the running back core coming back, offensive line coming back, and he's got a great surrounding group of guys around him. And so I think if he goes in and plays within himself and you know doesn't try to push the envelope too much and you know just executes the game plan, I think you're going to see some great things from him. We talked in that piece about balance between run and pass, and every coach on paper would love to have uh, the balance. This team seems to be set up pretty good to, to have a nice balance, keep some defenses off. It really filter. does. Last year we came really run heavy, um, and you know when people knew, to, especially towards the end of the year, that you know what we were doing, we saw a lot of eight-man boxes, and it got really, really difficult. And as well as we ran the ball, sometimes we we're kind of running into a brick wall. So I think having dual threats on, you know, on, you know, run game, pass game is really going to make people have to play as true. The key to the whole thing that a lot of people don't talk about is the offensive line, and I think for the first time in a long time here at UNLV, you have quality depth in, in this interior line area that's really going to help you guys go through the season. You know, you know, UNLV, when you look at it through its history, it's had a lot of good skill players, you know, and a few guys here in their offensive line, but that was we were really in bad shape when we got here. You know, eight scholarship offensive linemen, a lot of guys were underside, just didn't have the ability to play at this level. So Coach Garrison and Coach Cotton, you know, I mean, you know, the whole staff going out and recruiting and really – realizing that if we don't fix that, this program's never getting fixed. So um, I like the situation we're in right now. Um, it's a young group, but it's an experienced group. You know, we lost one guy in the two deep. Um, and even after this year, the funny thing is, is you're only going to lose two guys, you know, and, and both second string guys. So um, this is a group that's going to be good for a long time. Let's uh, look at the other side of the ball now. The defense comes into the season with fans eyeing their every move. The defense comes into the season as the big unknown and the unit that a lot of people are eyeing as the swing to the season. Only two starters return from a defense that had its share of struggles last year. But there's new blood and a new attitude with a group determined to flip the script. The guys, they, they hear all the outside noise, so they hungry. They got a chip on their shoulder, so they'll be flying around this year. Senior defensive lineman Mike Hughes Jr. is a team captain and veteran presence. The Palo Verde product says fans will see some fire. They're going to see a lot of passion. I give you that. They're going to see us go out every Saturday and put our life on the line for them. Defensive coordinator Kent Bear has added a lot of speed and in year three has more quality players to sub in. I like our guys. I think we got more depth. You know, we got some young guys are going to have to play. Uh, I like their effort. I really love their attitude. So why should the defense be so improved? A lot of it has to do with some high quality transfers that were recruited that will have an immediate impact. Included in that group is former Iowa player Jameer Outsi. We're really excited. You know, we want to, we're using last year as a motivation and, you know what I mean, push this year, correct our mistakes and, and just learn from what last year mistakes that they made and just how we could better ourselves. Uh, you know, it's a lot of new faces, a lot of hungry, eager guys, a lot of guys that play special teams. So, you know, they got a little taste and it's just like you've given a dog a treat. You know what I mean? You know, he's going to be hungry, going to be eager to play. So it's a lot of energy and guys are just really excited just to get better. The Rebels have improved at stopping the run over the last couple of years, but they've been burned in the passing game. Last season, too many times, defensive backs were either beat or didn't turn to the ball, which led to big plays or penalty flags. Syracuse transfer safety Chauncey Susum is expecting to help change all of that. He comes with 30 games of experience under his belt for the Orange and a plan to change the DB's culture from the inside. They can expect, you know, just a lot more. A lot more, um, a coach, a better culture coming to the secondary, you know, a lot more standards um, being raised and things like that, just, you know, a, um, a little bit more of um, a higher education of things like that being passed around and, you know, just guys feeding off each other as far as energy and, you know, as far as on the field play, just holding each other accountable for standards. UNLV doesn't want to get into shootouts every week to win games. That's likely to depend on this defense, who says they're ready to dig in and get the job done. 
So up front, you have Mike Hughes, who's a, a proven player, but Jameer Outsi is, is a playmaker. I think this is somebody the fans need to keep their eye on. Yeah, I tell you what, Jameer was a great get. You know, we waited until he finished up school in the summertime, graduated, and was able to, to come on over. And I hey, he's been such a great addition. I mean, you see it right there in that interview, just his personality, his vibrance. You know, the team's really, really kind of been drawn to him, and he's done a great job and pressed us off. So we're excited to see him play. At the linebacker position, it's really hard to replace a Tau Lotalele and Ryan McAleen, and, and you're going to have to have some guys uh, maybe uh, rotate in and out there, but it's kind of basically cut by committee, I guess, right? It, it really is. I mean, it's a young group. You know, Gabe McCoy, Bailey Lolangi, um, you know, those two guys coming on in, and, um, you know, and we, we've really worked hard on, you know, solidifying that will spot. We've got a couple guys, you know, working there. And uh, the, group, the good thing about it is a, it's a longer, faster group. I mean, you see the speed out there. So you just want to see the maturity and just, you know, the instincts. I mean, you look at Tao. Tao was such an instinctual player. You want to see that. And that'll be developed. But I'm excited about this group. I mean, you saw guys like Chauncey that are brand new to the group and guys like Jericho Flowers who, you know, ended up having to come over to play the offensive side last year. And he's had a tremendous, you know, spring and camp. And there's some new names out there that I really think are going to turn some heads, you know, and they need to play well. And we believe they will. The big concern for fans, I think, and there were major issues on the back end with the defensive backs last year. We got a lot of new people that have rotated in. How comfortable are you in terms of that being fixed? Because that was something that was evident every week. It really was, and we've really struggled over the last couple of years with it. And I think a couple of things. David Lockwood coming in to be the corners coach has kind of brought a, a different energy and different philosophy to it. So I think you know that right there is going to help the improvement of it. Um, you saw Robert Jackson, who was a junior college transfer last year. Sometimes it takes those guys a little bit longer to kind of you know understand Division One football, even though they're a little bit older. And you know, so I, you saw his maturity. He ended up starting in the Wyoming game and it got cut short uh, due to injury, but I think he'll do well. Chauncey coming over from Syracuse, he's a graduate, articulate guy. He started there, he's played against some big time teams, and I think that maturity back there is going to make a big difference. I mentioned Jericho already. Tim Huff, you know, he, you know, he, he's only a junior. I mean, he's played a lot, but I mean, he kind of got thrown into the fire really fast. So having him in there with those group, I, I really think they're going to do a good, good job. Evan Ostry was hurt last year, had the you know shoulder injury that ended his season early on, and you know now he's an older guy. You know, he's a red shirt sophomore, shoulders fine. So there's a couple guys on there that I think that um, we've seen a little bit, but we've seen them young. We've seen them as they're learning. Now they're an older, more old group, and I think they're going to do well. We're uh, looking forward to seeing the progress throughout the year. We're just getting started here in the Red Zone. Up next, a closer look at redshirt freshman quarterback Armani Rogers. What are his thoughts on taking his first snap as a college signal caller? Find out next in the Red Zone. You're watching the Fox 5 Rev Zone Sports Show, presented by R.C. Willie, your home, your way. It's been a long time since the players come to UNLV with as much fanfare as Armani Rogers. Here's a closer look at the quarterback that is set to begin his Rebel career. Armani Rogers gets the keys to the offense this year, and he comes in as one of the most high-profile recruits in Rebel history. The 6'5", 225-pounder from Los Angeles was a four-star recruit who initially committed to Cal, but thought UNLV was the place he really wanted to be. The accolades have been pouring in. One national publication compared him to Cam Newton, but Rogers is keeping a level head. They're comparing me to Cam Newton, which is a great thing. But then again, I also want to prove to people why they're comparing me to him and just go out there and just, just kill it. Rogers redshirted last year and soaked it all in. He's earned a reputation for being a student of the game and being coachable. Time is good, but you pushed it. You pushed it, right? Come on, throw it. Use your torso, right? Get it in there. Rogers has put in the time and begins his Rebel career surrounded by veteran weapons, which he hopes will keep defenses off balance. They're going to have to figure out who they want to key on. Now we have all our receivers back. They're like, all right, they're killing us with the pass game. All right, they're killing us with the run game. And then they have to take me into consideration, like, he can throw and run when he wants to. And the line's going to do their job. So with that being said, like, this is going to be a tough situation for the defenses. When he takes his first college snap this Saturday, it'll be the culmination of a lot of hard work. But Rogers says he'll keep everything in perspective. Just to be able to play college football at this level and be the starting quarterback for the first snap, it's going to be a great experience. I'm going to have a lot of 
a lot of emotions, but I'm not going to try to show it too much. I'm going to keep it level-headed. There is always pressure on a college quarterback, and even more on one that comes in so highly touted. Rodgers has the mental makeup to block out the outside noise and just do what he loves, compete. Don't go out there and try to impress everybody else. Just go out there and play my game, and then everything can fall into place. So when you get a chance to watch him and talk to him, there's a certain level of maturity to this guy, even though he is young, that he brings to the table. Yeah, you know, a lot of that comes from the way he was raised. You know, his dad, uh, you know, played at Colorado, played in the NFL for a number of years. And, you know, after meeting him and his family, that's one of the reasons you get so excited about recruiting some of these kids is, you know, their upbringing. And, you know, and his dad's very, um, been really a good mentor to him as far as the way you handle things, the way you approach your work. And, you know, and we're adding on to that. So, you know, love his approach, love his dedication. You know, his teammates are, you know, they're, they're full believers in him. So, you know, we got to help him out, get, get him through this stuff. But I'm excited for him. When you get a big recruit like that, the instinct for a lot of people is to just throw him in there right away. You redshirted him the entire season last season, and I think we're going to see the benefits of that. How much of an impact will last year have on this year for him? It'll be so invaluable. I mean, just the experiences of being there, you know, listening to the headsets, hearing the play calling, what's going on, seeing some of the struggles the quarterbacks went through, and you just grow and mature. I mean, heck, just, you know, evolving into that college environment. But there's a lot on a quarterback's plate. There's, there's no other position in sports like it. I mean, there's so much riding on them. There's so many decisions that they have to make. Um, you know, they have to be that natural leader. So I think giving him that year to grow and mature really helps him. I mean, sometimes you're in a situation where you got to go with a guy immediately. Very few times is that really really work out for a true freshman you know so our whole thing is we're not looking for the quick fix we're trying to build this thing to last by red shirting him and now knowing he has four more years to go I think we're setting him up for a great situation and setting the Rebels up too. Yeah Rebel fans will be uh, glad to hear that he told me that the game has slowed down considerably after red shirting last year that's good news for the upcoming year. Time for another short break then it's time to get down to business we are going to break down the season schedule and this week's season opener against Howard we're going to do it all in just two minutes as the Red Zone rolls on. You're watching the Fox 5 Red Zone Sports Show, presented by R.C. Willie, your home, your way. This season, the Rebels have 12 games in 13 weeks with the Mountain West schedule and non-conference games against a couple of heavyweights out there. The season kicks off this Saturday as Howard comes to Sandboy Stadium for a 6 o'clock start. We'll have more on that game in a moment, but the off-field subplot in this one is the battle of ESPN anchors as former Rebel Kenny Maine will likely trade some smack talk with Howard alum Stan Barrett. The first roadie of the season takes place the following Saturday as UNLV looks for a little revenge in Idaho. Last season, the Vandals came into town and stunned the Rebels 33-30 in overtime. After an early bye week, UNLV travels to the Horseshoe in Columbus to take on Ohio State and more than 100,000 fans. The Buckeyes will pose a big challenge, but remember, UNLV played Michigan tough at the Big House two years ago, and for the upperclassmen, that experience should help settle any nerves. Mountain West play begins the following Saturday as the Rebels return home for the first time in nearly a month to tangle with San Jose State. The following week, it's another home game, and it's a big one, as defending conference champion San Diego State comes to Las Vegas. On October 14th, UNLV heads to Colorado Springs for a matchup at Air Force, hoping to carry over some good karma from the last time the Rebels played there. In 2013, playing in sub-zero temperatures, UNLV manhandled the academy to become bowl eligible for the first time in 13 years. Seven days later, Utah State comes to Sam Boyd for homecoming. The first time those two teams have played since 2014. Then it's off to Fresno to battle the Bulldogs and new head coach Jeff Tedford. November 4th, Hawaii comes to the Ninth Island in a game that is almost always high scoring and down to the wire. The final home game of the season is that Friday night. A late season non-conference tilt with BYU in what's expected to be a packed house in the stadium and a national television audience watching at home. UNLV ends the season with two road games. First, a Friday nighter in Albuquerque against New Mexico. That's another place that the Rebels won the last time they played there. 
Thanksgiving weekend, it's the game the state has circled on its calendar. The battle for the Fremont Cannon as the Rebels travel to Reno looking to take the cannon back and paint it red. As always, the hope is for one additional game after that, a bowl game. In order to achieve that, UNLV must navigate its way through this schedule with at least six wins. So I know coaches don't like to look ahead and each week in the rep zone we are going to preview the following weekend's game to get you ready. So we're going to focus in on Howard and the season opener 6 p.m. out at Sanborn Stadium on Saturday night. And there's a lot of unknown here because they did overhaul their coaching staff. So they could be uh, tinkering with some new systems as well. Yeah, you know, anytime you're, you're facing a new staff, you know, you got to be prepared for a lot of different things. You know, we, we expect them to, you know, go out there a little tempo and, you know, but they're going to throw a wrinkle here and there. I mean, that's exactly what I would do. So, um, you know, again, for us, it's just making sure we're, 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 we're balanced and we're, we're ready for whatever they throw at us, you know. So we, we've got a lot of different things. And the good thing about camp, especially being a week longer, you've worked a lot of different situations, personnel groups, different, you know, you know, uh, we've worked option, we've, we've worked, uh, you know, empty. So we'll be ready for whatever they throw at us. And really it's focusing on ourselves, just playing a good, clean game, you know, limiting the penalties, making sure there's no assignment er errors there, and, and making sure a young team plays real well and plays like they're a little older. One side note to this, earlier we talked about Armani Rogers being compared to Cam Newton, the quarterback for Howard, Cam Newton's little brother. So uh, there might be a little talking about uh, maybe that uh, on the line of scrimmage with some of those guys in there, but, but kind of fun for us media people to kind of stir Yeah, up. it was kind of funny when someone, you know, made that comment earlier in the summer, you're like, oh, geez, you know, you don't compare him to that. And then all of a sudden you look and, you know, it's Cam Newton's brother playing, so it's, that's kind of funny. So, you know what, once, uh, once that first ball is kicked off, no one will be thinking about that. So just getting that first first down and first stop. On D. One uh, final break for us. We're going to be back to wrap up the Red Zone right after this. You're watching the Fox 5 Red Zone Sports Show, presented by RC Willie. Your home, your way. All right, Coach, good luck this weekend. Kickoff set for 6 o'clock, Sam Boyd Stadium on Saturday. We hope to see you there. Of course, we'll wrap it up in the Red Zone next Sunday. Thanks for joining us tonight. We'll see you next week. I'm showing what we're made of, made of Sweat and blood, here comes a flood Oh no, but nothing's gonna shake us, shake us Until the end of days They'll remember our names Make yourself in The Fox 5 Rib Zone Sports Show was presented by R.C. Willie. Your home, your way.